Good morning, evening, afternoon, or whatever time of day it is for you. It is the podcast, Raw Chatter. I am your host speaking, Vicky Midwood. Bit croaky today, folks, and it is a solo episode from me. So the title of today's episode is Communicate to Liberate. And this is because over the last couple of weeks, particularly, the topic of communication has come up so many times. And I believe that when something comes up a few times, it's a cue, it's a clue that I need to expand on it and I need to talk about it and share just what is going on. So shall we dive in? Communication is one of those things that we think, all of us, we think that we know how to do. It's just, it's talking to people, isn't it? (laughs) But it's not. It is so much more than that because we are communicating silently with our body language all of the time. Our facial expressions, the little ways that we move our feet, our hands, our fingers, the way we sit, how we position ourselves when we're standing in front of an audience, all of those things are conveying a message that is getting interpreted by people who are watching, who are listening, who are on the receiving end of whatever it is that we're talking about. And so many people... um, kind of have an idea that there are certain tells like you know if you're glancing to the right or if you're doing fast blinks it means this or it means that but what I want to kind of really look at is this the bigger picture without you having to learn how to decipher the minutiae like perhaps an interrogator for the for the CIA would do I'm not talking about that kind of body language but how we roll our eyes for example if somebody is making us feel uncomfortable or they're boring us because you're hearing a story for the 20th time you kind of know what I mean it's the little gestures that you may make where your eyebrows lift up or you scowl slightly and these are the tiniest things that will give away what you're really thinking which probably isn't matched with your words. And this is where communication is a bit of an art and it is a skill. And we don't see it as such because it's not something that we're taught. Um, And I'm not going to bang on about the fact that our schools don't teach us the things that really matter, but we're not taught about finances. We're not taught about the basic stuff about handling money. We're not taught about how our body functions properly as a whole. We're not taught that the brain and the body are not separate when we're at school. We're certainly not taught how to communicate properly because we learn how to behave from the kind of the programming that we've been given as kids at home, and that is often then followed through by what happens at school. And the majority of the time, you have to recognize that schools have an agenda. They believe that they have to stay where they are in league tables. It's all about teaching you to learn well and to do well in exams. And for them, they have tick boxes of where you are supposed to be in terms of your ability to read for example by a certain age or to be able to tie your shoelaces or and those kinds of things and if you don't tick that box then there is a there's a kind of um it's a pressure that they try not to put on you but they do it's kind of masked as encouragement to get you to to get on board and to get with the kind of the program. And here's the thing, we all learn differently. We all pick up things differently. And when we are young, we don't have the same powers of interpretation. We don't have the same understanding that different words can mean different things in a different context. And this is where it starts to cause problems when it comes to issues around addiction, around eating disorders, around body image, around alcohol usage, and how we feel just about ourselves in general as, as, a, pe- as a person or as individual people. So what I hear a lot from my clients is, is the phrase, I don't deserve or I have to work hard for it to count, or it has to be difficult for it to be worth anything. And this is a communication issue because we've learned this through what our parents may have said or done, through their body language, their response, their reaction to things that we may have said or done, or that siblings in the house may have said or done, 
or not done or not said. And this is why we've got to recognize that the skill of communication is something that we all need to take on board. Now, there are some kind of big hiccups when it comes to where the flaws lie, if you like. And the main one is that the majority of the time, we are not aware of the words that we are using. How do I know this? Well, very simply, if I ask somebody in a conversation, what did you just say? 99% of the time, the person can't remember exactly the words that they used. And this is a clue that a lot of what we say and the way that we communicate is very automatic. It's been programmed from decades ago. Now, the people I work with tend to be over 35 um, and under 20, right? It's kind of, there's not a, that kind of age group in between is not the age group that I tend to spend a lot of time with. Our issues kick in when we're very young, especially around food, addiction, anorexia, binge eating, anxiety, OCD, that kind of stuff. And and I'm not going to say that cliche, it's not all about the food, because of course the food is a big part of it. But there is something behind what's driving it. And oftentimes it's to do with how we feel about ourselves. And that comes down to what we have been exposed to in terms of the way that people have behaved around us, what we've seen, massively important, as well as what we've heard. Now, it's no coincidence that the people that tend to work with me are people who come from backgrounds where there is high expectation from parents for kids to do well academically. And often my clients actually have teachers in the family, whether it's mum or dad or both. Um, and I, that's no coincidence either. Teachers have a specific way of communicating and speaking. And even when you're not at school, you're kind of still in, in teacher mode. And how do I know this? I am a teacher, right? I fall into that category. Um, and there's this belief that we have to help our kids to understand things and give them an explanation when actually that is not what is required at all. But what it is giving them is the message that they always have to have a reason and they always have to have an explanation for everything that they do. And that's where the problem lies because sometimes we can feel things and think things and just do things just because it feels good, just because we want to. But then when we are asked that horrible question that I hate so much from, from teachers, from parents, why? Why did you do that? Why did you say that? Immediately you feel under pressure. You are feeling judged. You are feeling interrogated. Oh my God, I've got to come up with a reason. And often you say what you think the other person wants to hear so that you can avoid any kind of confrontation or conflict. And that down the line can lead to people lying, right? Not intentionally, but just because it's easier for everybody. And here's the thing, every, every single human wants life to be easy. This is driven by our brain. This is nothing to do with you being a lazy person, right? Your brain wants to save as much energy as it possibly can from you having to do any extra stuff because your brain does a hell of a lot just to keep you alive. So when you add in extra work for the brain to do, like being conscious of the words that you're using and how you are moving and sitting and what your facial expression is doing, that's like way too much energy. And so, it automates things. And I've said this before, but it doesn't hurt to hear it again. Your brain is excellent at adapting and it is excellent at automating things that it thinks you need to save time on relearning every day. So simple things like getting dressed, simple things like if you drive a car, right, you have to relearn every morning how to drive it because it's been automated. So your brain is helping you always to save energy. And that means it's going to automate a lot of stuff that actually can get us into trouble because we come out with stuff and you've all done this, I'm sure, where we kind of go, oh, my God, why did I say that? Because it just comes out. That programming's in there. The words are in there. And then we have to somehow kind of backtrack and get ourselves out of it, hopefully successfully. Sometimes, though, because we don't have great communication skills, 
trying to get out of something, we can actually dig that hole even deeper. We can actually make it worse. And so one of the big things that I spend a lot of time with my clients on is helping them to be aware of the words that they are using, because words on their own can be powerful. We have associations, we have perceptions of what that term means. And then we don't always know that it can mean different things in a different context. And therefore, the context that we're using words in is also important. And this is the stuff that takes practice. This is the stuff that ideally we ought to be really focused on and thinking about when we are, are younger. Now, I don't want to ever blame parents because there is absolutely no point in doing that. But parents, when I work with particularly younger people, have got to recognize their part in their child having issues. And this is not a blame issue, but this is recognizing actually the way I've been speaking, the way I've been communicating may have been giving a message that I didn't intend because nobody sets out to communicate in a way that is going to cause harm to anyone. We don't mean it. It's just that we don't know that that is what is going on. So when a parent is asking, oh, why do you feel like that? they're not recognizing that the child now is thinking, oh my God, now I'm going to have to come up with a reason and justification. They think they're being kind by trying to get the child to open up, but there are better ways of doing it. And this is why working on your communication is a key part of what I do. So for those of you who have not seen what I do on my website, I actually do lay on there the principles of, of what I do and how I work. And I work with the art of change, which is an acronym. It's, it stands for awareness, responsibility and taking timely action. But also within my programs, with all of my freedom programs, whether you're doing immediate freedom, immersive freedom, whether you're doing intimate freedom, infinite freedom, right? Any of those freedom programs based on principles. And, and I love this phrase and I'm going to say it just because I love it. Okay. Methods, there are many principles, but few. Methods may keep on changing, but principles never do. And a good coach, an expert, a mentor, a specialist will work on principles based upon science, based upon proven results, also based upon life experience. And so the six R's are the principles of my programs, all of them. And that means that we review first, then we renew your connection to your body and mind. So the review is where are you at? Where do you want to be? Right? Why are you not happy? What is going on in terms of how you're feeling around food, around alcohol, around your body? Then we've got to renew that connection to your body and mind and help you to understand they're not separate. They are interwoven all of the time. You cannot separate them. Then we have to look at rehabilitating your gut and brain function because when people have been behaving the way they have around food and around alcohol, there is absolutely going to be dysbiosis as far as the gut microbiome is concerned, but also people don't understand actually how their body works um, in terms of what does your gut actually do? What does your brain actually do? What parts are automatic? What parts come from the survival instincts of the brain, what bits are in the the kind of the, the limbic system, the automated system, what's going on in your frontal cortex. If you don't know how your brain works, if you don't know how your body works, it's very difficult to then change things. Then we've got to reprogram your whole language and way of thinking and redesign your way of designing, of, of kind of doing your day, right? Because all of this stuff then allows us to kind of tweak and refine as we go along. The language part starts from step one, right? Because I can see the words you use when you fill out the questionnaires for me. And I already get a clue of your programming from when you were at school, when you were little from parents, etc. And recognizing when we come out with things like, yes, but, yes, but, so I'm hearing you, but I'm not going to do what you're suggesting. Oh, that's interesting. So when we're hearing, well, that's interesting when you're presented with a science fact or something that goes against your current belief system, what you're saying is, okay, what you're asking me to do now is change my belief and I'm not sure I'm in a position to be able to do that yet. So interesting is, is a great word because it allows us to move forward. I don't understand is something that people need to be saying more of, but they don't, right? 
Could you explain that to me a little bit more clearly? Right. These are ways of asking for what you need in a way that doesn't hopefully feel less than I'm stupid. I don't get it. Okay, because what we've got to recognize is when it comes to communication skills, people have some excellent ways of explaining things and other people have some terrible ways of explaining things. Some of us think about it, do really, really well when we just read words and we can read them and we can we can make sense of them that way. Others of us like to hear things. Um, and if you've got any issues with with reading or dyslexia or dyspraxia or ADHD, then potentially listening to things is what you want to do. Sometimes we need both. I work best with both. I like to hear and I like to follow words as well where possible. But we're all different. We also all learn with a sense of touch, right? We all learn when we are connecting specifically to our body and what the language our body is saying, when we actually get our hands on. So understanding that there are different ways of learning, there are also a myriad of different ways of communicating. And it's not about it being right or wrong or better. It's about you having a skill set and recognizing when do I pull in this way of speaking? When do I hold my body in, in this way with certain people? And when don't I do it? Because it might be intimidating with other people. Communicating in a clear way is something, again, I try and get people to do. One of the things I find with a lot of my clients, not all of them, but with a lot of them, is that they use a hell of a lot of words to say something that requires only a few. So they will use 25 words instead of five. They find it very, very difficult to just answer a straightforward question with a straightforward one word answer. They always feel compelled to add in a reason or an explanation. And I have to go, stop. Explanation's not needed. I didn't ask that. I just asked a yes, no question as an example, which therefore requires a yes, no answer. If I require an explanation because I don't understand why you gave me that answer and I want to understand it, I'm more than capable of asking. But don't offer the explanation when it's not required. Because nine times out of 10, we're giving an explanation to somebody who actually isn't interested They're not fussed your reason why you can't do the thing that they asked you to do. Honestly, they just want to know, can you do it or not? Yes or no. Now, when I talk about being clear, there's a lot of misunderstanding because people are worried that it will come across as being blunt. But that's about tone of voice. It's about how you hold yourself. It's about how you say it. And you can come across as being rude or blunt if you say it in a certain tone. If you're going to be sarcastic with it, then, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to come across as rude. If you're being passive aggressive, if you're rolling your eyes and your body language is basically saying something other than the words that are coming out of your mouth, then, yes, potentially that is going to be received as being rude. But this is why I'm saying it's a skill. It's a skill that we need to hone. It's a skill that we need to practice. And it starts at home. So parents, watch your words, not just to your children or around your children. And this goes grandparents as well. But look at what you're saying to other family members. Look at how you're responding to what you're listening to on the radio or on the television or online, because your response to things is programming is teaching your kids there's a certain method of doing things, saying things, thinking things, feeling things that's acceptable. And there are other things that are not. And this is where we have to start being really aware of the words we choose to use. And if you can't remember what you said one sentence ago, then that's a clue that the majority of the time you are speaking in a way that's been pre-programmed and you're not fully conscious of how your words are landing or being received. So I'm going to give you a little exercise to do. If you're not sure if you're communicating clearly, I want you to try and put yourself in the shoes of the other person. Because so many of us expect the other person to be a mind reader. And the amount of times I hear, well, they know. Well, they know how I think. They know how I feel. They know what I want them to do. Well, I'm going to put it to you that they don't know. So get clear 
on exactly what you would like people to do and how you would like them to do it. In other words, be very specific. Because when you start to be conscious of giving specific, clear instructions or communicating in a specific, clear way with detail that leaves no room for assumption or misinterpretation, you're going to start to be conscious of the words you're choosing to use. So that is my challenge to you today. Get conscious of the words that you use. Use fewer words to say what you need to say and get specific and clear with what you're asking the other person to do. Try it. See what happens. I hope you will find that actually it feels far less stressful for both sides. And I'm just going to leave you as I do with the message, folks. We only have one life as far as we know. We only have one body. Please take care of it because it is taking care of you. And talking of taking care of you, I have got a workshop going on tonight. It's Tuesday, 11th of June. The details are on the link that are in the show notes and also in the description. And this workshop will be running on a regular basis. So if you can't make this one, please do check up on my website on the events tab on a regular basis to find out when the next one is. If you do want to get in touch with me personally, please do. I am available on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and also you can get in touch with me via email. It's vicky at vickymidwood.com. And I'm going to leave it there, folks. If you've liked what you've heard, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, do that as well. And if you think that anything you've heard today is going to be helpful to someone else, please pass it on to them because the more we can start talking about the stuff that actually matters, the more we can get real and raw, the less stressful life is going to be for everybody. Have a great day. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye now.